we just uh, you know meet for the masses. We just want to give it away. But no, so we we I think we're I think we're now in that you know at least up to ten bucks a bottle. But yeah, uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm happy with that. We'll, we'll, uh, we improved the situation a little bit for our bottom line, but. Well, at 110 cases a day, at, at 10 cent price hack, you're going to notice it. So, <laughs> right, right, for sure. Yeah. Well, that's really interesting. So, I mean, these are these are all, from what I can see, uh, pretty standard. Now, are you uh, are the are the um, orchard stands being made seasonally, or are those year rounds? It's year round. Yeah, that's a, they're they're in broad distribution. So, oh, okay. I mean. Be, uh, I mean, yeah, you could find it in, um, you know, pretty, you know, Indiana and Ohio and Illinois, Kentucky for sure. That would be widely available, but wherever wine sold. So I was going to check and see if you yeah. distribute to Michigan and see if I can lay my hands on some before I leave town. Yeah, we definitely sell in Michigan, and I don't know, I don't know about Orchard Stand in Michigan. Michigan has been a a, a, a little bit of a challenge for us uh, um, because of the strength of the Michigan wine industry. And I know a lot of the retailers are are really, I guess I would say, protective of of those wineries, and uh, so it's a bit of a bit of a challenge for us to get significant sales in, in Michigan. Well, Michigan is uh, right now is the most mead centric state in the United States. So I'm more pretty sure that Michigan has more meaderies than any other state in the country. Although Washington State is running really close right now. No kidding. Yeah. So, so the sort of the mead, the mead is from Michigan. That's in a 500 milliliter, almost like a pint bottle. Mm-hmm. Is what? Who? What is that one? You know what I'm talking about? There was what? a crazy label. Kill the golfer and. Oh like no, that. that's 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 oh, beat. That's beat. Right. I, I don't know. I'd but, have to. But significant, huh? They're pretty big. Yeah, they're they're the average meadery is what you would consider to be an art artis, you know artisanal level, very small, um, you know, on you know from the perspective of a winery. Okay, I mean you're talking right. about you're buying tanker truck loads. They're buying 55 gallon drums. So um, right. now the big right. meaderies, like the top five or so meaderies, they are buying tanker truck loads. But, um, right. you know, the rest of them are buying 55-gallon drums, and there's an awful lot of them. They're still buying in five-gallon pails. Right. Huh. Okay. So, sure. yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's just – there's a, it's a, we are a fast-growing but relatively small industry, you know. And there are a surprising right, right. number of wineries that are producing one or more meads now. And do you think that the that mead is getting the attention it needs from the distribution system, from distributors, from retailers? Is that uh, is that a challenge? And yes, uh, what, it what, is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, just, just distributors, generally speaking, don't give mead. A lot of distributors don't give mead the time of day because they don't. They don't know, know what, what to do is. with it. They don't know what to do with it exactly. They don't understand it. So what a lot of meaderies are doing is a lot of educational work with their distributors. They're going on ride-alongs to the, uh, you know, to the to the end retailers. Uh, they're doing a lot of work with the bars, with the restaurants to get them, at, you know, up to speed on what this is. And um, there's even been there's a book, and you should carry this in your in your uh, um, in in your uh, uh, I say tap room because that's what we call it in the mead world. But <laughs> in your sure, sure. Yeah, tasting room, yeah, in your tasting right. room, yeah. Uh, there's a book called "Why uh, the Art of uh, Mead and Food Pairing," and uh, Chrissy Mannion Zarpour is the author. And it's a big tabletop. It's a big oversized book. It's like 450 pages. Mm-hmm. Pairs some amazing recipes with meads from all over the world, and it's really, really a great book. And it's what it is. Is it's a, it's right. basically a how to on how to enjoy mead. Sure, sure, that's great. Well, I got that right underneath my note about citra hops. So we're I'm learning something here. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> the art of mead and food pairing. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, it's a great yeah. book. It is a great book. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, yeah. oh, well. Chrissy worked on that for a couple of years and tasted and paired meads with foods from all over. And so the, the recipes are uh, themselves are well worth it. It's like the greatest cookbook ever if you're in our in our in our part of the world, you know. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, sure. No, I'm I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm all looking right into that. That's fantastic. You can find it on Amazon, but if you want to get it, um, and I can drop I can drop uh, Mona uh, a link where she can order. If you decide you want to put it in the tasting room, you know, where you can get wholesale copies. So. Okay. All right. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Plus, yeah. Chrissy seems yeah. to be tra- um, touring all over the country at the moment. So she is. She yeah. Be she's going to be in. She's going to be in California here, like the day before I get down to that part of California. So it's like, well, there's timing for you. Is she making kind of the same the same circuit you are? She's hitting all the meteries. No, no, <laughs> she's just uh, she's doing. I guess you'd call it a book tour. Um, she's she's uh, doing appearances at various meteries that are carrying her book, and they're doing like uh, food pairings and some dinners and things like that. So sure, um, she sure. actually Chrissy owns a uh, organic farm in Oregon outside Portland, and. Uh, they, uh, she does like, uh, you know, grass fed beef and sustainably raised chickens and, you know, and antibiotic free turkey and all of that stuff. So, I mean, her, her meat, uh, and I guess her CSA is full all the time, you know, because it's, she does a, sure. she's very, very committed to this. She's a ex IBMer who's like, you know, back to the land kind of thing. She escaped. <laughs> she escaped. Oh, she escaped. Yeah, That's exactly. <laughs> she did escape. Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. But, uh, yeah, yeah, so, fantastic. I mean, she's just a real foodie, you know, in terms of that. And she's been uh, – she makes her own mead. Uh, she has a meadery, though. She doesn't really do a lot of big production because her, you know, her farm takes up a lot of her time. So um, – Right. You know, it's uh, it's that uh, it's that kind of thing. But, yeah, she's doing kind of, I guess, a mini book tour with the thing, and she's popping up, and she was just saying she's going to be at uh, Golden Coast Mead in uh, near San Diego on uh, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. June 23rd. But, uh, yeah, you need, to, you need to get a copy of that book, and then once you check it out, if you want to carry the tasting room, you let me know, and I will uh, I will get you the link for uh, um, wholesale copies so you can stock it in, in the yeah, tasting room. Yeah, I, I will do that for sure. I will, I will uh, get on that, absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, and then if you want, you know, call Chrissy, have her come out and pair all your meads with recipes, and then you really become Yeah, there we go. Yeah. No, that would that would be great. We'd, do, we'd love to do special events like that. And I, I, I would confess that we're a little ignorant about uh, mead and food pairing. So. Well, we can but, fix uh, you up then, you know. Really <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, that would be a great thing. I mean, you guys want to do a meat dinner or something, uh, we could, you know, we could totally, I could totally connect you and her and, um, you know, see if there's something that she can arrange. So, sure, sure. Yeah, that's that's an exciting yeah, opportunity. Yeah, and, and uh, you should, uh, you know, I mean, if you're wanting to get more hooked in in the mead world, uh, do you know Ken Schram up in Ferndale? I don't. Oh my gosh! You, you should. Poor man. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I know. I didn't live in a cave. I'm sorry. <laughs> you have been insulated, Bill. Gee. <laughs> yeah. Oh um, man. Ken, Ken no, Tram just... is widely recognized as um, widely recognized God. as kind of the yeah the father of the modern mead trend. And, um, you know, he's, I learned from him and I've been around and in this business for 25 years for just mead. Ken's been making mead for even longer. And Ken is an accomplished wine expert as, and winemaker makes, uh, uh, he's got a meadery up in Ferndale called Trams Mead. And, um, he makes, uh, he makes a mead called, that he calls the Heart of Darkness. A lot of his meads have literary names. So he this makes this mead called the Heart sure. of Darkness, and it's this big, bold, fruit-forward, in-your-face mead that is, uh, it sells for $150 a bottle, and it's a 500-mil bottle, and it's, <laughs> and it's amazing. And people, his last vintage, now, seriously, this seriously, yeah, I paid $159 uh, dollars for a bottle of it just a couple weeks ago. And if I had ago. the money, I would too. Mm-hmm. And uh. um, this mead is made, Ken has like a little orchard on his property. He's got several acres and he's got a little orchard. So he's got like blackberries and raspberries and currants and, you know, uh, uh, cherries and whatnot. And um, he, this this particular mead comes entirely from the fruit that he grows on his own property. So it's a special limited vintage that is all his stuff. And, and it's all hand hand wow. picked, hand, hand prepared, picked, hand prepared. Yeah, 
the meat is hand mixed in small batches and when the last batch came out uh, a month and a half ago uh, there was a line like people were lining up for Rolling Stones tickets and it literally sold out in 83 minutes Good for him. Yeah. That's, that's excellent. Yeah. I'm going to have to get my hands on You need on to talk to this guy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's yeah. sold out it's now. Good. The next yeah. round isn't coming out until, I think, this fall. He only does, he does it like it's a batch a year, and it's like this year's batch is last year's fruit kind of thing. You know, yeah. so. Yeah. Got it, got it. Yeah. Is that S-C-H-R-A-M? S-C-H-R-A-M? S-C-H-R-A-M-M-S mead.com. Strams, Strams me, got it, yeah. okay. And he's up in Ferndale, so he's not all that far from you, really, you know. No, no, road, road trip. Yeah, uh, sure. well, and, I mean, that's also where, uh, and, and Bee Nectar is a scant 20 minutes from Shram's Mead, now, where Ken Shram mostly deals with big, full-bodied, fruit-forward meads. Um, he's he's much more traditional and, um, you know, and that's what he likes to make. And the stuff sells out faster than he can put it in bottles. Now, bread at Bee Nectar does more, a lot of session meads. So the lower alcohol, 4 to 6 to 8 percent. And, and his all have fun names like Kill All the Golfers and Necromangacon and, and, um, and uh, Zombie Killer and Zombies Take Manhattan. And, uh, you <laughs> know, I mean, there's just, he, right. and every mead has a story. And um, they also do they also do sizers and ciders and um, I think they're working on some beers too I'm not sure but uh, a lot of, you know, almost all of his stuff is is session level and much of it is carbonated so it's entirely different style and again he'll do he does a lot of small batch special releases he's got his standards that he's making all the time and you know in the big batches but he does a lot of small batch limited release stuff or seasonal stuff and people will line up and it'll be gone. Literally, almost as soon as they open the doors, gone. That's fantastic. Mm-hmm. You know, I have a Dennis Dunham is our, our winemaker, and and we have had you know, just short conversations like we just need to think more about me. We need to just be more creative, do something a little kind of out there. Uh, and you've given me a bunch of great ideas, and I really appreciate it. Oh, no worry. That's part of my that's my job in this industry both has got me and is yeah. executive director of the amma i'm telling you i mean you might want to consider being a member in the amma because our job is to get mead out there and help mead makers you know showcase their stuff to the best ability and and you know also get mead recognized as its own beverage rather than just a you know a, a, a redheaded stepchild of wine which is the way the feds see us right now um Right. It makes it it makes it hard on the on the mead makers because we're treated like wineries and subject to the limits that wineries are in terms of ingredients and they're like well you can't add you know cinnamon <laughs> and it's like well yeah but, yeah we but, can and they're going but 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 where are the grapes and it's like it's not wine it's mead hello <laughs> yeah 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 no kidding I bet that's super frustrating. Because not everybody there is trained to deal with meads. Well, they don't know what it is. There are no there are no well, guidelines. Yeah. We've managed. The AMMA has gotten one guideline put in that mead. Fifty one percent of the fermentables uh, come from honey for it to be called mead. And um, you know, beyond that, you know, we're trying to get them to recognize that. Yeah, sometimes there's fruit. Sometimes there's spices. Sometimes there's like you know grasses and 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 you know vegetables in there even so, oh the big one would be grain right. because of the way and they've what? got the designation between beers yeah. and wines and if you're classified as uh, a wine uh, you can't put grain in it and oh my god uh, Ma- no, yeah right 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 that would get that would get them all excited wouldn't it oh yeah, yeah. yeah. every oh, yeah. time somebody it's tries bizarre. to make it's a bracket okay. they lose their minds you know because malt you want malt no 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 you malt? no no malt no. in a wine what do you mean what do you mean you yeah. can't do that that's yeah. a beer you know so they get yeah. they lose it yeah so they lose this shit is what they do. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do is get them, you know, created, get get ourselves created as our own thing. One of my pet things is I want to see it tracked that way. So when I get the hundred people a year, I get coming to me going, "Can you tell me how much mead was sold last year versus this year, so that I can take that to my bank to get my loan, so I can open my meadery?" And I'm like, "Sorry, no, I can't because we're redheaded stepchild of wine, and they don't track us separately. We have no idea." Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah, right. I think fruit wineries end up being in the same it. category as a lot of times. What do you mean? Where, what do you, right, where right. are the grapes? You know? Can't, can't sort it out. Right. Yeah. Right.